Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bye. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw Double or Nothing Review. Uh, the only pro wrestling podcast you'll be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, available wherever podcast can be found uh, live on the Twitch twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson, uh, on demand, youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, and then, of course, in the audio realm, wherever you hear podcasts, you can get this one. Man, I'm exhausted from that show. That was a hell of a show. Me too. I think they did everything they could under the circumstances and i think you know sometimes we've we've noticed this with the wwe uh certain things um when they're when they are presented with a challenge with uh, a situation that they have to change gears uh when their backs up against the wall mm -hmm. it it seems to light a fire in the room yeah for sure Yeah. yeah and uh and i think we definitely saw that uh, with the stadium stampede match, um, we had kind of no idea what it was going to be, but I mean, you could kind of understand what they were going for with, you know, during the build with the the stuff on the concourse with the Sammy Guevara in the golf course, which of course, or the golf cart, which they uh, obviously referenced in this one. Well, uh, it's essentially a DDT pro with a, a much larger canvas, which is really interesting to me because it, it feels like. I'm just I'm maybe it's through necessity. Maybe it's just happenstance because of what we're dealing with right now and that this kind of stuff just works better because of, you know, the fact there's no fans in the crowd. It's, it's, it's abnormal circumstances. Same with WWE and their money in the bank match. Mm-hmm. But it, I love that, like the influence of Kenny Omega with the DDT stuff, because he, he loves that stuff. He's well known for doing that stuff is shining through. Uh, it's just kind of interesting to see the various EVPs and what they're involved in. Um, And him and Cody are the two guys who obviously have ended up with a fair amount of influence. Uh, I mean, Cody, Cody's just doing Cody anyways. Like what we saw with him and and Archer tonight is probably what we would have seen had there been a crowd anyways. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, So he seems like, you know, unchanged really. But uh, the other stuff, it really seems like Kenny, probably Jericho, um, and Matt Hardy. Don't don't discount the influence of Matt Hardy. I think and too. Matt Hardy. I think they all have a heavy influence on this sort of you know main event scene with the inner circle versus the elite. Um, I wonder if the original blow off plans for inner circle versus the elite might have been blood and guts. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I think so. I think so. Remains to be seen if this. I kind of feel like this is it for. The elite yeah. versus the inner circle. Yeah, after watching that match, it definitely seems to be the case. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, double or nothing is typically, you know, a big blow off moment for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw some uh, a title change tonight as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there was a lot of interesting stuff going on. Uh, it, it felt maybe a bit clumsy leading up to the Mox match. And I thought the Mox Brody Lee match was really, really good. Yeah, it was pretty solid. It was solid stuff. And then we got um, to the really, stadium stampede. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, by, apart from the 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 extremely overbooked nature of the TNT title match, I didn't walk away from any of the matches feeling unsatisfied. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think primarily the reason that was the case with the TNT title match was you got Tyson out there, and there could be a myriad of reasons why he didn't throw a punch. But you got Tyson out there. The expectation is he's gonna throw a punch. Um, yeah. And it, it didn't happen. It didn't yeah. happen. He took his shirt off. He posed. So I guess I'll backtrack. I'll, I'll I'll dig myself back out of that one. I'll flip flop here. The the Tyson element might have been different had there been fans there. Maybe, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Um, let's just get right into it, and we'll hit these points along the way. Oh, uh, quick! Sure. I want to I want to give a shout out um, to some new patrons. And uh, I would it be 
possible for you to check on the new channel members? Because I know sure, we got some new ones. Time. And we shouted okay. them out during the stream. But we've got Friendo Club TV. If you like Stephen Larson, if you like going in raw, we got bonus episodes, including mm -hmm. Vintage 10 for the Wins, which you can't find yep. anywhere else. Nope. Uh, we've got uh, all sorts of stuff. At five days a week, we've got bonus content. Um, mm -hmm. And you can get there uh, via the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson uh, by becoming a Twitch sub, which uh, later on tonight or tomorrow, I will send out, I'll blast out an email to our Twitch subs with all the content from this uh, past week. And uh, also for YouTube channel members, you get access to the bonus material. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got that Rob Jones. Fabian Astorga and Sam Vopney, uh, welcome to the Patreon. Thank you all. Thank you very much. All right, I'm trying to track down these new members. Give me a moment, please. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I'll just hop right into it. It's, if it's sure. like if it's a mess, we can do it on tomorrow's episode. All right. Because like I think it sort of resets once we've had all the activity on the on the live broadcast. Thanks to everybody by the way yeah, it's, for it's it's yeah, it that's all gone. Okay, so. okay, yeah. Well we'll we'll see what we can do. I think there's like there's you can get into the guts of YouTube and find the new channel number. It's not a big deal. We'll get we'll we'll hit them up tomorrow for sure. Okay. Uh private party versus best friends. Uh kicked off the uh well, first we had a Jake promo with uh Lance Archer and they were in yeah. like maybe one of their flip houses. Oh yeah, this was their 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 side business, their side hustle during the Apparently, buy. They got some sort yeah. of uh, uh, house flipping endeavor because uh, Lance Archer's in there with a the sledgehammer, hit a tire or something, warming up, and then he proceeds to go and destroy the commode in the toilet in this ramshackle, beat up house. They probably bought at auction at the courthouse for I don't know thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, could have depending on depending That's on where they some are. Sort yeah. of squatter abode, uh -huh. maybe a drug haven. Mm, could Who be. knows. They got a good deal on it, probably. Uh, they're in the, the there is a demo day, and then uh, uh, you know uh, once that's done, then they'll come in with the contractors, start getting to work on 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 making that hundred fifty thousand dollar profit on this. On this so new, that's uh, that's in property. kayfabe. They they have also a real estate business that they're yeah. developing. Jake not only did he go through uh, DDP yoga, but part yeah. of his his rehab, his like long term rehab, is becoming a real estate salesman or a real estate agent rather. Anyways, yeah. a real estate mogul. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the the match that uh, we got during the uh, the kickoff, the buy in, yeah, the buy in was Private Party, who is probably had plenty of matches on Dark, which I don't watch, but they have not been on Dynamite anytime lately, and a duo that has been heavily featured on Dynamite lately and winning a ton. The best friends. Oh, I forgot. Speaking of winning a ton, oh yeah, you won by a point. A point. Could have been one point, could have been ten points. Big goal, doesn't it feel to be still here with, with your dad? Yes, it does. <laughs> You're not the yeah, only that, one who could do that voice. I, I felt like, I felt like uh, 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 Big Gold was feeling a little choked up about uh, not coming back home. Oh, oh. So. well, too bad, Big Gold. You're stuck here. Big, I think Big Red just bullies him endlessly. Another reason Endless. why I think I think Big Gold wants to come back, uh, come back to me. Well, maybe we'll find another uh, whatever other non WWE wrestling show pops up next. We'll do a watch along with that. Anyways, Private Party versus Best Friends. Uh, this was a really really fun match. They gave this a lot of time. Yeah, they did. Um, Basically, the whole kickoff show. And we got to see a lot of really cool stuff. I, I Private Party is so much fun. I get yeah, the man. feeling that, that you know, obviously they're a very young act, and mm -hmm. uh, they're probably you know just bringing them along and uh, letting them get a lot more polish uh, before they give them, you know, they've got all the time the in the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Uh, I had to miss some of this, this match, but uh, the end saw uh, best friends break up uh, gin and juice, um, hit their finish strong zero to pick up the win. They are getting the tag title opportunity in the near future against the tag team champions, Kenny Omega, uh, Adam Page. Um, after that, Arn Anderson has an interview. Uh, he lists some what ifs. Will I spine Buster Jake? Will Jake DDT me? Will Tyson knock out Jake? Will he knock me out? I don't know. This match has to happen before any of this is found out. Will thick Arn eat a sandwich later? Probably. I know. I know. <laughs> if his thickness is any indication, yes. <laughs> You're thick. Uh, after that, we got the okay. opening package. And uh, after that, we had uh, to open the actual show. 
the casino ladder match. This was a mm-hmm. very long match. Uh, there were a lot of great spots in it, and uh, we did get mystery opponent or mystery participant, Mr. Brian Cage. You know, we were doing our predictions video. I was like, all right, I can't really think of anybody else other than Drew Gulak. And once it went up and I read the comments, because I'd heard the name Brian Cage floated as a possibility. But we, by the time it got to us actually doing predictions, I had forget, kind of forgotten about Brian Cage. Yeah. And I saw his name in comments. I was like, damn it, I should have picked Brian Cage. Mm. I should have. Mm-hmm. Once I was reminded that he his name was in contention, I was like, damn it, that's who I should have picked as mystery opponent, not Drew Gulak, Brian Cage. And sure enough, Brian Cage it was. Had he given any indication on social media that his – uh, uh, health was uh, cleared. That his Not body that was cleared. Well, I don't wrestling. follow him on social media, so yeah, I don't either. I hadn't, I hadn't read any headlines to that effect. I, se- I hadn't seen anything. Um, but uh, you know, if if you're going to be cleared and you're going to want to make a huge splash upon your debut in AEW, uh, hush hush uh, is going to be the word, man. Yeah, I mean debut Dr- in AEW. Drew, Go- that's funny. <laughs> Sorry what? about that. No, I what? I went to. Uh, for some reason, I, I they just played an ad for me when I went to Twitch. <laughs> that's weird. That was because I'm logged out of us. Oh, that's that is sorts weird. of weird stuff going on right now. Anyways, uh, so uh, yeah, it was Brian Cage. But man, this match was good lord. There's a lot of notes here because there were. I mean, even dude, you're you're just. I think these notes are probably just boiling down the big moments. Yeah, and there's a lot there of like, huge were moments. A lot. So SCU. Uh, it was Kazarian and Scorpio Sky that started off uh, yeah, the this match. Uh, they get in the ring and immediately uh, go in opposite directions to go get ladders. They start to bring him in, and they're both like, hey, you got ladder, you got ladder. Let's not both have ladders. Instead, they should then, you have ladder, I have ladder. Let's both go up and get this giant chip, but the size of a, a, at least an, a large pizza, if not extra large, mm-hmm. um, and get it down. And then we both uh, have this chip. We can worry about who's actually going to take on Mox for the title shot later on. They could have done have this. Doom, doom, doom. Have a match later on. Yeah. Have a match later on. Go up there and get that thing. Because then you're increasing your odds from one in, what was it, nine people? One in nine. Yeah. Well, in this case, yeah, yeah. To 50-50. To like, yeah. Get, yeah. So just give it to somebody and then agree to have a match. As gentlemen, yep. agree to yes. have a solo match. A friendly. And, uh, you know what they should have done? How about uh, this? To what? show unity amongst SCU, they go up and get it. And since uh, uh, Kazarian has chance against Mox, Scorpio Sky is at a title shot, they say, you know what? Christopher Daniels, you get your shot at Moxley. That's just throwing away the chip. You're I just throwing the chip into oblivion. <laughs> I wonder if they got a talking to by Tony Khan backstage. Said, hey, listen, you guys are both out there. No shenanigans. No cooperation until everybody else is out there. Then I don't care. Maybe, maybe you see uh, Tony Khan talking to somebody like that. Hey, finger pointing. Probably not. Anyways, kick this match off while I try to load my Twitch back up, man. Sure. Uh, so yeah, as you mentioned, it's Kazarian Scorpio Sky to start. They be, you did all that. Uh, Kip Sabian's out next. Third, Jimmy Havoc hits the ring to help him out. They start laying people out. Eventually, uh, Kazarian uh, suplexes him into a ladder. Uh, next out is Darby Allen. He takes the kip and Jimmy Havoc takes him out with a suicide dive. Ramp Scorpio Sky into the ring post, hits Kazarian with a stunner, and then Darby sets up this huge ladder. And he has a skateboard with him, so he throws a skateboard at, at, at Kazarian. So Kazarian's punched over a ladder that's bridged across between the apron and the barricade. So he climbs this huge ladder, jumps off with the skateboard under him, and Kazarian moves, he crashes to the floor. Eats, eats shit. That looked... I Okay, so I'll be honest with you. Every time they replayed this, I turned away. It wasn't that bad. Like man. a child. <laughs> I couldn't it, handle he, it, man. He hit the ladder with skateboard, and as the ladder breaks, he just leans forward. Yeah, he was selling that knee like crazy. Well, I mean, that, he's a good storyteller, man. No, I know, it. but that just made it worse for me. I was like, oh, man. I know. I don't want to see anybody get hurt either, but that was fine. That was Especially I mean, with sure hurt. Knee. I'm sure hurt, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, next out, Orange Cassidy. Uh, so he goes to Excalibur and wants to know how he, what he has to do to win the match. And <laughs> yeah. the kind of the story of him throughout this match, at least the first part of it, he wasn't sure or he was too lazy to set up a ladder. He didn't know how to do it. He didn't. He was confused. It wasn't laziness. It was pure confusion. It was like, what do I do? At one point, it was laying flat on the ground, which, you know, there's like, what, six inches or so if of like elevation. Like 
yeah. and then he just sort of stands on it and tries to reach up, and it just doesn't work. It that was really work. good stuff. That was pretty funny. Uh, Colt Cabana out next. He seems uh, 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 amused mm-hmm. with Orange Cast. He tried to open the ladder. At one point, he's got the ladder down on one side to try to open it, you know, like a crocodile mouth, <laughs> not putting yeah. it up, opening it like this. Um, and so he, uh, uh, Orange Cast, he pushes Colt out of the ring. Uh, he almost gets, uh, wait, almost gets the chip. I don't think this means. Takes a nasty spill on the ladder, gets his fingers smashed. Oh, that's Colt. Colt climbs it. Yeah, he uh, was really he batting that the ladder thing around over. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Orange Cassidy pushed the ladder over. And normally when they do that, they'll push it on the side. Yeah. But uh, Orange Cassidy just went from one side while Colt Cabana held the ladder as it was falling towards the corner. Yeah. And I was like, oh gosh, he's going to get smushed. He ate that it whole thing. It looked bad. Yeah, it sucked. It, it wasn't that bad either, but his fingers got smashed and yeah. that probably hurt the most. Uh, Joey Janela out at number seven. He takes out a bunch of people. Uh, Colt's trying to climb a ladder. Miss, oh, on the Sorry, ladder's not playing. Um, hits Colt with missile drop kick. Joey starts to climb the ladder. Kazarian pulls him off. Luchasaurus is out next. He clears house. House power bombs kip on everyone outside the the ring except for Kazarian. Kazarian, don't worry. He is a choke slam onto a ladder. Then another choke slam middle of the ring. Darby finally comes to. Darby uh, Luchasaurus pulls him onto the top rope. Uh, instead, Darby hits Code Red on him. Uh, Darby sets up a ladder. Brian Cage out at number nine. And so he's Darby, got with his Taz. Uh, with Taz his uh, his intro. He has like music. But it's introed by Taz, and he says, Who can't stop Brian Cage? Something like that. Who can't stop the path of Brian Cage? Something like that. Yeah. But I guess, you know, they're, they've been laying the groundwork for this for several weeks. Taz has been trying to say to Darby Allen, Hey, let me help you out. Darby. You're so close. Let me help you out. Come but, on, Darby. Uh, I guess Taz found someone that wanted his help, which is cool. It's going to be awesome having Brian Cage and Taz Oh, together. man. What a great mouthpiece. So then Brian Cage just proceeds to destroy everybody. Um, he he f he just tosses uh, Darby across the ring f10 style, then throws him out of the ring. Power bombs the shit out of Kip Sabian. He hits a massive German suplex to Scorpio Sky. He hits a huge suplex off the ropes on Joey Janela. Uh, he starts to climb the ladder, and then Orange Cassidy hops on his back, and, a- and he starts. They're both kind of reaching for the chip, and then everybody else in the match comes in, pulls him down off the ladder. Everybody beats down Brian Cage. He gets blasted a bunch, and then they toss him ringside. Stack some ladders, a piece of guardrail, and there's this giant, I don't know, like a kiddie pool size poker chip. Mm-hmm. It's huge. Mm-hmm. And they dump that on top of him. And so you know Brian Cage is going to bust out from underneath that. Sure enough, he does. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth, some more, some rough spots. Brian Cage gets back in there um, uh, while Luchasaurus is climbing a ladder. He and Luchasaurus square off for a bit. Cage power bombs Luchasaurus into a ladder in the corner. Uh, he starts to climb the ladder. Darby is in. <sighs> so Dar- uh, Darby has the temerity to slap Brian Cage. Uh, Cage responds with a massive lariat. Hits him with a Steiner screwdriver. <laughs> move I haven't seen in years. Yeah. Um, and so Cage puts a ladder on top of the turnbuckle, on the top turnbuckle. And they fumble it the first time. But nonetheless, puts Darby on top of it. Gets underneath of it. Press slams it. And then throws ladder and Darby out of the ring into another ladder. Yeah, it looks scary. That looked bad. That looked, for me, my mind, that looked worse than the, the other spot. Yeah, um, I know. I did. It did. Yeah, I know. It did, too. So then Brian Cage climbs up, gets the chip. He's got a guaranteed title shot somewhere down the line. So him versus Mox will be good. I think that's a good opponent for Mox in the future. Uh, it seems to be the way AEW is more or less doing things. That they'll debut someone new uh, in a very high-profile spot, uh, make them feel like they are a huge deal, and then when they need to get the final win, they don't get it. And do you like remember we saw later tonight? That was, dude. That was the template for the Attitude Era with WWE. Whenever mm-hmm. somebody new would come in, uh, if it was Boss Man coming back, a uh, 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 British Bulldog coming back, uh, I remember any number of guys. They would bring them back in like a main event scene sort of way, like they'd enter the main event scene. They wouldn't all necessarily get title shots against Austin or whomever had the title at the time, but they'd be they would be they would debut in a big role. And then they would sort of land back to where they, you know, would be naturally. Yeah. 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 Um, In this case, they're also feeding Mox a bunch of big dudes. So he already had his first title defense, I think, was against uh, 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 Hager. Hager, big dude. Brody Lee, big dude. He's going to take on Cage, big dude. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're really trying to present him as the guy who can, you know, take on all the big guys and be the scrappy guy who can get through, you know. 
Because yeah, so, he always looks like within 10 minutes of a mox match, he always looks gassed. It doesn't matter if he's fighting Kazarian, Darby Allen, or Brody Lee. Yeah, I know. So he's I good know. for that, you know? Yeah, he is. He is. And and, and Cage pr- uh, presents a different challenge from Hager or Brody Lee in that he can do the powerful muscle guy stuff, but he's also pretty darn athletic. He's a, Yeah, he's athletic and jacked, yeah. So he yeah. has all that. So it's a different challenge for Mox. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and I, I would assume... They play the cards right. They won't be in any rush to push that storyline. Give Brian Cage time to establish himself. Just don't like on Dynamite this Wednesday. Have him say, "Oh, Mox, I'm going to challenge you in like two weeks' time." Take your time with Brian Cage. Have him torment Mox just bit by bit while he's involved in other storylines. While Mox is involved in other storylines. Well, Taz needs to be the guy who sort of has the playbook for Brian Cage, yeah. and so he needs to say, "Listen, we're going to take our time with this. We'll we'll let you know that kind of thing." Um, Mm -hmm. And then maybe when Mox takes on another two challengers or something like that, if he's really like worn down, then Cage comes in and says, you know, you haven't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't I don't see Cage taking the title off Mox. That's going to be Hangman. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, anyways. Well, Hangman or or Kenny, either of them. Yeah. Uh, Next, MJF versus Jungle Boy. It's a fun match. Uh, MJF early on faked a knee injury. Um, trainers looking at him as soon as Jungle Boy turns his back MJF is back on his feet on the attack going after Jungle Boy's arm yes Jungle Boy tries to counter uh, some aerial stuff uh, focuses his attack on MJF's back midsection uh, in the end though uh, there's this nasty spot towards the end so Jungle Boy they're on the apron Jungle Boy super kicks MJF falls up with a poison rana and MJF's head Hits right in the corner of the apron. That was that ugly, man. God, that was that ugly. Sucked. Yeah. So Jungle Boy, put, you know, they check on MJF, make sure he's fine. Jungle Boy puts MJF back in the ring, goes up top. Uh, MJF grabs onto Aubrey Edwards' uh, leg, and so she's holding on the rope and trying to get him off. And in the process of doing so, shakes the rope. Jungle Boy, you know, gets tripped up. He falls off. Um, MJF goes up. Uh, Jungle Boy manages to hit like a, a sit down power bomb, gets a two. We get a series of roll ups. Uh, MJF gets the final one to get the win. Yes. Uh, we get a TNT title video package next, and then the TNT championship bout. This kind of played out 75% of the way as I thought it would, except Cody didn't get busted open, which he should have. Yeah, I was, shocked. Then, I, was, I was pretty shocked at that. And then Tyson didn't punch anybody. Yeah, I was, I was kind of shocked at that, I guess. Um, Apart from those two things, yeah. like immediately, Lance hits a, a, a blackout. Cody rolls out of the ring. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Oh, sorry. You want to talk about this belt first? Let's talk about this title. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, AEW tweeted out a picture of Mike Tyson debuting, holding the TNT championship title. And as soon as I saw it, I thought uh, one thing. Uh, this missing? this belt looks unfinished. Yeah. <laughs> or at the very least, this belt is not impressive at all. There's like a ton of like negative space it it just literally does look unfinished and i didn't think that they would ever debut an unfinished title uh but they actually debut and they even said on air to their credit this title is unfinished and they're like oh it still looks great though but yeah it's unfinished and and then uh fightful sean ross uh from fightful select uh we uh, received an email right to our email inbox that Everybody, said, go go subscribe to Fightful Select. They do fantastic work. They're terrific. You get news right in your email. And he knows a disturbing amount of wrestling knowledge. He has a disturbing amount of wrestling knowledge, hence his many wins on Quizzlemania. Yeah. Um, however, uh, yeah, corner and Fightful, uh, the title totally, uh, they, because of COVID, number one, there's only, a, there's only a very small amount of places in the country that actually do this kind of thing that does the title mm-hmm. belts. And uh, because of COVID, uh, yeah, none of them are open, so they had to cobble together this belt. It's unfinished. It's probably going to look, look a lot better once things start opening up within the next yeah. months or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Tyson comes out first. He brings a belt with him. Uh, Archer comes next. He finds some dude backstage, brings that with him. Choke slams a living hell Oh, out my of God, him. yeah. And Tyson sees that, and this is a look on his face. Yeah. Yeah. He is stunned. They, did, is they had a great close up on his reaction. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cody comes out. He is a blackout immediately. He rolls out of the ring. And so the ebb and flow of this match was Lance strings together a lot of offense. Um, Cody hits a few moves. Lance uh, brushes it off. Uh, another long string of offense. Cody hits a few moves. 
uh, Lance, again, more offense. And so Cody was getting beat to hell. Mm-hmm. He was getting absolutely beat to hell. Sort of a standard Lance started, Archer match. He just beats the crap out of a person, and he just yeah. laughs and smiles whenever anybody tries to dole out offense And it's to him. wildly entertaining. Mm-hmm. And then they start overbooking some crap towards the end. <laughs> so uh, Lance hit that old school thing into, into the moonsault. He tries for it again. And for some reason, Jake Roberts gets on the apron. Yeah. When his man has the advantage and distracts the ref, this allows Arn to get up on the apron himself. He trips uh, Lance Archer off the top rope, so he's sitting on the top turnbuckle. Cody hits reverse suplex. And that's when another ref, Paul Turner, comes out and tells Bryce, what's his last name? I have no yeah, the, idea. The ref that was actually ref in this match. Yeah, anyway, no, I know no. his first name is Bryce. He tells Bryce, hey, Arn tripped up Lance. And Bryce is like, all right, guess what? Arn, you're toss. You know what, you, you know what Jake? You too. You're toss. He tosses both of them. Remsburg. There it is. I knew it was something like that. Meanwhile, uh, Lance hits this massive German suplex on Cody. And Lance is like, come on. Come out. We're like, who is he calling out? Does he have another friend other than Jake? But no, it's just Jake. He comes out. He's got his sack with him, so probably with a snake in it. Mm-hmm. Tyson gets uh, gets up from the uh, timekeeper area, gets up on the stage, uh, takes his shirt off, and starts flexing at Jake, <laughs> and, and squaring up yeah. like he's going to punch him. And yeah. Jake's like, don't want none. So uh, he tells Jake to get lost. Jake goes backstage. Uh, meanwhile, Archer's going for a blackout. Uh, Cody reverses that into a crossroads, then hits another for the win. Tyson in and presents Cody with the belt. So it only took two crossroads after Cody got basically uh, destroyed for the better part of 12, 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 That's true. I know. Um, but this is Cody. Cody has to be. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, look, it's it, it's a tough spot to be in with Cody because he is pretty much the top baby face, right? Like, he's... He is, right? Mm-hmm. At least he was before Pandemic. Yeah. This Archer feud, I'm not sure has done much. I don't know. This has been interesting in front of a crowd. I really do feel... I understand that Double or Nothing is the blow-off for pretty much everything they're doing. But I kind of feel like Archer needed to win this, man. I like I went into it and I had my little notes written down about reasons why I'm pretty sure this is going to go Cody's way. Yeah. And you know, we both wagered on him. I put two confidence points on him on Cody. Yeah, I only had one. But this is the one booking decision where okay, Cody, he can't win the AEW title, so they're just going to give him this title. I thought when before we knew that the AEW t- AEW title, I'm sorry, the TNT Championship was uh, was like not finished. When I saw the picture, I was like, "This belt almost looks like it's made to be thrown away." Mm-hmm. And I wonder, after Cody talked it up endlessly, how awesome would it have been if Lance Archer took won the title and said, "You can't win the AEW Championship." So I'm just trashing this one. You'll never mm-hmm. see this title again. And mm-hmm. just doesn't now, obviously, as the EVP, Cody can say, well, the title isn't just a title. It's a division. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. But, you know, stupid shit like that happens in wrestling like all the time back in the 90s, which is where this match came out of. You know, yeah. like this was just yeah. an overbooked mess from WCW in the mid 90s. Yeah. Pretty um. So I don't know. I just feel like Archer. He didn't even take a punch from Tyson to like be done away with. It only with. took two crossroads for Cody to win. I feel like more often than not, he hits three. Yeah. That's like on 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 your 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 rank and file AEW wrestler. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know. It just and I understand maybe they didn't want Tyson to hit Archer and have Cody win off that because they thought it'd make Cody look weak. So I maybe feel Tyson like- didn't want to do that. There's there's a myriad of reasons why you think all right they didn't want to have the punch, but do something, do something. I feel like Cody's match matches against Dustin and uh, uh, Sean Spears were better than, and even MJF were better than this one. I just, I just think that like there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough of a, of a Cody comeback here. No, he just hit two crossroads in one. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Anyways, I mean, he hit that like top rope. What was it, Bulldog or whatever? Or cut oh, reverse, or reverse suplex. Was. Yeah, reverse suplex. Yeah, but here's the thing: like, too. if if Archer, but Archer kept on laughing that stuff off. I know. And the thing, but the thing is, like, if 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 Archer gets himself punched by Tyson, 
not because of his own hubris, because of his own arrogance, because uh, in his own ability to be an unstoppable monster. And if 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 effectively Archer screwed Archer out of that win, I don't think that necessarily makes Cody look weak. Oh, I think it does. You add a Tyson punch, that's a free ticket. Regardless of, of, of if Archer screws Archer, Cody is benefiting from that, and Cody needs Cody that's wants Archer, to look I mean, strong. I feel like that's Arch, Archer beating himself. That's Archer beating himself. Because remember, Mike. Ty- Although Mike Tyson did give Stone Cold a fast count. Yeah, he gave him a really super fast count. fast count. Really fast count. <laughs> so, and nobody ever said nothing about that. Anyways, nope. uh, so yeah, Tyson, like you said, Tyson presents him with the belt. Cody's happy. <clears throat> After that, uh, we had uh, a great like sh- shoot slash kayfabe. This is uh, great. Uh, update on Britt Baker, uh, the head medical guy at AEW, uh, gave an update uh, to uh, Alex Marvez said uh, that uh, he says, well, for one thing. The patient here is worse than the injury. The injury that she sustained is significant. Uh, and uh, they did like a little like a picture of the x-ray and like a little circle and said there's a small fracture in one of her bones in her lower leg. Yeah, and there was one of the ligaments that they think like an I think LCL. I think the LCL. I the think little, Alvarez the, the lateral. LCL. Yeah, the yeah. lateral yeah. lateral ligament. Then yeah. that yeah, partial tear of that one. Um, no ACL damage, apparently, though. And right. I mean, what the trainer said was given. Um, spot uh, it's 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 something else that the injury is, wasn't worse yeah and that then being she, said it's significant yeah she's going to announce on dynamite when she's going to return um right. the fact that he was talking about how she's a bad patient but then he also said that well she's a role model so she wants to do this herself um, it was really good yeah no it was good stuff uh makes me think that regardless we're still going to be seeing plenty of Britt baker while she mm-hmm. you know rehabs this or does whatever she needs to do to get back in the ring shape. I don't know which one the I mean the lateral would be side. Mm-hmm. Um, but Seth Rollins tore the ligament when Samojo put in the coquina clutch and twisted around and, and Seth oh, uh, yeah, I remember tore that. ligament in his knee. It was the one on the outside. Mm-hmm. The outside side of the knee. And he could keep wrestling. Uh, I don't think he had a broken bone. So I mean uh, Britt's going to be on the shelf for a while. Mm-hmm. But if it's, I want to say it was a PCL that Seth hurt, but I could be wrong about that. Um, maybe the pos- posterior back. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. All right. Uh, anyway. So after that, uh, we had uh, the match she was supposed to be in, which was uh, Chris Statlander. This time she's taken up Penelope Ford, who replaced Britt Baker. Ah, oh, all right. Sorry. Lineman, 70, 72T. Lateral is on the outside. Medial is on the inside. Thank you. So it is the outside one. There you go. Um, Kip came to ringside. Of course, he was in that ladder match. He came out all bandaged up and beat up, and he had his crutches. Crutches, yeah. So that was good stuff. Uh, this sort of went how we figured it would go uh, with uh, Statlander getting the win. It would mm-hmm. be interesting to know if, because you were you were saying that you thought Statlander was going to win the Brit match. Um, if it were to happen, yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious if this was going to be the same deal uh, and Brit would keep on losing or... Um, if this would have been a step up for Britt. We'll never know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Britt hadn't gotten hurt, I don't know if I would have picked Statlander to win. I mean, I, I'd pick Oh, Statlander I thought that's what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said you would have picked Statlander. Oh, okay. No, no, I said I'd pick Statlander if the match was going to happen because, you know, we obviously saw Wednesday that, that Britt was hurt. We did our picks Friday, Friday mm-hmm. morning, knowing that she was hurt. We didn't know the, the, the degree at that time. But knowing she was hurt, if the match were to happen, I was going to pick Statlander just because Britt's hurt. Oh, That's you it. thought they would have had the match anyways and then give her time if they to... Did. If yeah, they okay. did have the match anyways, I think Statlander would probably would have won because, I mean, everybody pretty much saw that Britt got hurt. Uh, next, Sean Spears versus Dustin. Sean Spears came out uh, in a suit. Nice-looking suit. Uh, you, you know, he says, hey, you told us mediocre careers come to an end, but where's Dustin? He's at home washing his tights. Dustin's music hits. Uh, Spears turns towards the ramp. Cameron's behind him like he's all shook. He turns around and says, sorry, I couldn't help it. Trick's on you. Uh, he tells Aubrey, start counting down. She does. Dustin's music hits again. He's like, hold on. I told only once, you know. Yeah. Brandy comes out to the stage. And then Dustin teleports behind Spears, yeah. attacks him. Match begins. And then Dustin wins with the final reckoning. So the story we thought was, Sean Spears taking advantage of a compromise, maybe uh, end of end of career. Dustin Rhodes was, yeah. Dustin got beat up by Archer. He's back. He's refreshed, revitalized. Uh, 
to carry on with his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you forgot the most important part of this is that we saw uh, Sean Spears' butt crack. Um, and we thought we saw his bits. <laughs> so, like, he had – so, at one point, I don't even know what the – what was the impetus of the clothes coming off? Oh, I think Dustin's wanted to humiliate him because uh, Sean took off his jacket, jacket and his shirt. Right. And then Dustin had the advantage and then pulled his pants – oh, sorry. Spears had the advantage, took his belt off to, to hit Dustin with the buckle. And then uh, Dustin reversed that and then pulled his pants off. And at one point, uh, trying to pull him back in the ring, uh, exposed his buttocks. Yeah. And then uh, at first, we didn't know it was on the front in the front area of his of his boxer there brief. There was something looked that looked like his, fleshy. Like his, on it looked the, like his bits. The dick hole area. Yes. And so like it's it, it so it was like kind of obvious that it was like, okay, well, it would be a bit more flopping about if it was actually his bits, if it was yeah. hog. But yeah. like still it was like, did they like did they like like uh iron on like a hog on there to make it look like his bits came out? That's like No, even, it was it was Tully Blanchard's <laughs> It was Tully Blanchard's face, which I'm not even sure how they can explain that one, why he'd be wearing underwear with his manager's head on it. A little weird. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's funny. Cause I saw, I like this. This was fine for Sean Spears, whatever. Like this is a nothing, nothing, nothing match. Yeah. Um, but like I saw like a couple people on Twitter, just sort of randomly checking saying, Oh, the Ty Dillinger was booked better in. And I'm like, Ty Dillinger was called up to main roster and was never seen again, let alone, on a pay-per-view. So, like, I don't know. I think Sean Spears is in a much better position here than he was in NXT. Or, I'm sorry, WWE in general. In WWE, yeah. In NXT, yeah, debatable. But uh, given the, the, the level of talent that was brought in uh, right as he was kind of reaching his peak of popularity in NXT, it seemed like uh, the odds of him getting a title shot were, much less title, were uh, pretty low. Even uh, though I think the story was there to make it happen. I, I, I don't know. I really like how they handle... So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm unrealistic in thinking that he's going to be like a main eventer. Okay, so he had a Bobby Roode match at a takeover. Mm-hmm. He had a Sanity match at takeover. Yeah, we were there for that one. Uh, he had an Almas match at takeover. Really? Mm-hmm. Gee whiz. That last little run of his in NXT was actually pretty decent. huh? It was really good. And that's why I think if they had kept him around and, and, and built him right, he could have been champion. But, you yeah. know, I, I don't think that was ever in the cards for him. I don't know, man. He had that, like, uh, Zartan uh, collar. I think that prevented him from... No, at first it was being the Merciless. <laughs> yeah, that's Remember? right. And uh, I thought that was great. Uh, uh, so after that match, Dustin wins the final reckoning. We get an ad for All Out. We get the date, September 5th. No location. Historically, it's been the Sears Center in Chicago, but given circumstances going on right now around the world, uh, you don't want to commit to a location until you know you're actually going to be able to be there. But we have the date, September 5th. I assume that's the Saturday uh, before Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, D- uh, Cody, the one the one thing that sort of stuck out in the conference call that Cody had, the press call, um, mm-hmm. to me was he was asked about the fans stuff. And uh, he says, yeah, there'd be no reason for us to go to any other state until you can actually have fans in the arena, and we have no idea when that's going to be. I mm-hmm. would suspect, unless plans change. I mean, that's still another uh, three and a half months away. Um, All Out is going to take place at Daly's Place. However, the way Florida's been going, it also wouldn't shock me if we did have fans at that point because, you know, these states are starting to open up pretty quickly. Um, and three and a half months is a long time. Yeah. But uh, So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I really doubt it's going to be – I really doubt Chicago is going to be opening up to fans. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, in about three months time. Yeah. After that, we got a, a, a Hannah Kimura Memorial. Uh, you know, obviously everybody knows you passed away yesterday. There's mm-hmm. still a lot of unknowns there, but uh, really sad, man. Yeah. Super it's, sad. It's, so young. She was 22 years old. And, it's really uh, sad. And the circumstances surrounding it is just it's mm-hmm. absolutely awful. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, we had a video package recapping Nyla Rose, uh, Karo Ushida. And then we had that match. Man, and, it was uh, awesome. It was, yeah, it was a really fantastic. It was a really, really fantastic match. It was no DQ. Uh, Nyla Rose, smart, came to the ring with a kendo stick. Didn't mm-hmm. help her win the match in the end, though. No, not at all. Not at all. 
but uh, it was it was a ton of fun. Um, Sheeta came out with renewed intensity. Uh, they made a point. Commentary made a point of saying that while uh, they were doing the introductions for the match. As you mentioned, Rose came out with the kendo stick. Um, tries to hit a shot with that immediately. Sheeta evades. Uh, she eventually gets the stick. Hits Rose. She grabs it. No cells. Get tug of war. Rose gets it back. Uh, starts laying the Sheeta with some shots. Tosses a stick, which is probably a mistake. Uh, they start brawling all over the place. Uh, Sheeta starts doling out knees. Hold on Great a second. Bit. Hey, hey, wait a second. We got to say these kids again. What are they doing up this late? Cultaholic just raided us again with like 350 people. Welcome, Cultaholic Welcome. friendos. Adam Bacchini, Welcome. you're up way too late at night, man. It's way past your bedtime. Yeah, Go to like bed. It's like 6 o'clock. What's that? It's like almost 6 o'clock. I'm pretty sure they were staying up through the, throughout the night to watch this. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, look at all these Pachiti faces. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. Cultaholic, man. These guys, seriously, like, we, we have met... Uh, is there any? We haven't met Tom, but we no. met uh, uh, Jack, Sam, uh, uh, Ross, and Adam. Yeah. Uh, and dude, honestly, like the just the nicest people, just the, the best on dudes. the planet. Just, just the best, dudes. the absolute best. Seriously, the absolute best. So, like, so thank man. you, Cultaholic. You guys are all the best. Thank you very much. They were Hope playing. See you all soon. It's a, people are saying they were playing. John Cena's sexy high school adventure. I have no idea what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, but it sounds weird. Don't know what that is. <laughs> don't know what that is. It says at all. somebody or Sydney Zoomer says Pachiti was so drunk. <laughs> Damn it! I'm sad I was watching this. I'm. I wish I was. Uh, I wish I was watching drunk Pachiti. <laughs> Uh, where whatever. Uh, Sheeta hits this great knee, running knee, sends Nyla Rose into one of the giant poker chips that's laying around. Uh, before that, Nyla Rose slams uh, uh Sheeta through. I guess it was a craps table. It looked like a craps table. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That's one. My one thing that I really think they should have done was had live, active gambling games. Gambling, totally going on beyond the barricade. Here's the thing. Imagine that spot with Sheeta going through that craps table. Better the people playing there. I like know. Money on the line. Like, why was and it? that happens? And people be like, "Oh my gosh, what the heck?" You can have no a banged up, to a banged up Sean money. Spears, a banged up MJF, and they can't stop gambling still during the show. That's what should be been great. going on. That'd be great. That would be great. Um, so much awesome stuff throughout this match. Uh, Sheeta. Uh, the finish saw Sheeta going for Shining Wizard as she's approaching. Nyla hits her with the kendo stick. Uh, Sheeta shakes it off, kicks the kendo stick away, hits the Shining Wizard, kind of close to the ropes, gets a two. Uh, and then Sheeta picks up the kendo stick and blasts Nyla Rose right in the head with Just it. Just destroys her, yeah. Follows that with a Shining Wizard to pick up the win. It was awesome. Sheeta has been putting in a lot of great work for the last year, uh, ever since she made her debut at last year's Double or Nothing. Mm hmm. Uh, one of the best wrestlers on the roster. She's awesome. Nyla Rose is great. Um, fantastic match. Probably in terms of traditional wrestling matches, for me, match of the night. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, after that, we had tons of fun. Uh, Brody Lee versus John Moxley. Uh, our biggest fear going into this match was that it was going to be something I could have seen on the WWE Network from 2016 on SmackDown. Uh, I think Brody Lee had he he wanted to prove something here. And uh, John Moxley uh, helped him prove that. I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was a ton of fun. Um, I'm usually not a huge fan of like just a regular John Moxley match. Uh, I really like his stuff in New Japan on AEW. Sometimes it just feels like I'm watching Dean Ambrose. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I should expect much more than that, but uh, it is what it is. I thought this was a bit better than that, to be honest with you. It was. It was. And, and especially what. The spot on the stage, once I got to the stage, and it wasn't a protracted period because uh, they're up brawl on the stage. Uh, Mox hits a paradigm shift off the top of the stage. So there's know, like three steps or something like that and puts Brody through the, the match. And this is actually, or sorry, through the stage. It's towards the end of the match. But the amount of storytelling they got in from that spot to the end of the match 
was actually pretty damn solid. It really was, yeah, yeah. So uh, first Mox emerges from the hole on the stage after he paradigm shifts uh, Brody through it. So he crawls out, and you know, we got like three more refs down there. I got a tr- we got a trainer down there. So Mox crawls out. He uh, he gets back in the ring. Brody emerges, his blood running down his face. Um, he gets in the ring. Once the refs uh, you know decide, all right, this match continue. He instantly, oops, I just threw my pencil. Instantly tries the discus lariat. Mm-hmm. Mox evades that. Hits mm-hmm. paradigm shift. Covers. Brody kicks out at one. That was nice. That was really cool. Yeah, one. Yeah. And then Mox just starts unleashing a flurry of strikes pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish we'd, we'd see this intensity for Mox on a more regular basis. Well, he's not yet. New Japan isn't running shows. <laughs> he hits another paradigm shift. This gets him a two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then so he puts on a, a, a rear naked choke. Uh, Brody passes out, never taps. Um, and so, you know, they did their they did the steps setting up. Um, to that bit where where Brody isn't the unstoppable monster that say Lance Archer is, mm-hmm. but he's close, and you know it took three paradigm shifts and get choked out to lose. Yeah, uh, so uh, the the whole kicking out of the paradigm shift thing is is interesting. Uh, so uh, the aforementioned Sean Rossap on mm-hmm. Fightful interviewed John Moxley, and he says that because you remember when he was uh, doing the the Hager build. Uh, mm-hmm. He had Hager uh, or Hager kicked out of like a, or he no sold rather yeah. a paradigm yeah. shift. And apparently that was Mox's idea. I love mm-hmm. the idea that Mox is, you know, he's going up against these big guys. And what he's setting up here is that his finish is a finish that can work for some people, but it yeah. ain't going to work for everybody. And the bigger yeah. you are, the more difficult, the more difficult it's going to be to put you down. And I really love that thought that like your finisher is, mm-hmm. Is not just something that can is just a blanket for everybody. You can just beat yeah. everybody with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he has to come up with a different way uh, to do that. What was it? What was the, was the finish? I mean, the the finish for Hager was it was a paradigm shift in the end, though, wasn't yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. On a yeah. chair. On a chair. Yeah. On a okay. On a chair. Then. So you so know. Apparently, Tony Khan announced that Brian Cage versus Mox is taking place at Fighter Fest. So that'll be the kind of pay per view between. Now and is that in July? Uh, That's in July, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was that the one that I saw in the UK? That's the one you weren't here for. That uh, uh, Cal and I did the stream for when you were gone. There were stream. two. There was Fighter Fest. There was a scene. There was Fight for the Fallen. Yeah, that was the other one. I think that was in August, early August, maybe. Okay. 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 Cool. I forget which one I saw in England. So in about a month and a half, we'll get Cage versus Mox. I kind of feel like they could build that. A bit more, but yeah, I don't. Dis- I don't disagree with that. All right, man. Uh, so after that, we had a stadium stampede video package, and then stadium stampede. There's so much here. <laughs> the inner circle had football uniforms on, uh, and uh, some of them were in helmets. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, uh, the elite. Not unified in terms of their appearance. Right, they're all wearing the respective ring gear. And in fact, at first, uh, Hangman Page no shows. Yeah, yeah. Kenny's like, "Don't worry, he'll be here." <laughs> Eventually, he does show up on a horse. Yes, and he's charging towards Sammy. <laughs> Sammy runs into the bowels of the stadium. Page gives chase. Uh, it, uh, we get some more action. Eventually, Sammy runs back towards the ring. A bunch of crap happens. There's just so much going on in this match. There's a so lot. Much. There's a lot happening. There's I mean, a lot. We can happening. take each of the main bits. Well, let's skip ahead. So there's a bunch of stuff that happens. Uh, you know, there's some cool stuff. Nothing uh, uh, huge until we get the shot of Paige back inside the stadium. He's still looking for Sammy. He tells his horse to stop. He dismounts. Tells the horse to stay here. He ends up in like the east uh, east lobby, the bar. The bar. Yeah, he goes to the bar. So we cut up into the upper concourse because at that point, uh, XLAX, Matt Hardy, Kenny Omega have brawled up there. Kenny set up a guardrail and a couple uh, elevated bar tables. He's trying to suplex Santana through it. Instead, Ortiz throws sand, uh, salt in Kenny's eyes. Mm-hmm. They dump Kenny on that guardrail, mm-hmm. and they hit a double-team powerball with him through that guardrail. It looks like it sucked. Yeah, that looked bad. That looked Gosh, really bad. Gosh, it looked like it sucked. So then Santana Ortiz, they turn their attention to Matt Hardy. This was very clever. So in the area they were at, there was like a little pool, like a little private area pool. Yeah. And they're like, hey, let's do this. So they both dump him in the pool. 
uh, 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 Santana goes in. He just jumps in to fight Matt Hardy some more. Ortiz yeah. very carefully goes down the stairs because he apparently is not a, a strong swimmer. You know, they're only three feet deep. So they both go in there. They dunk Matt Hardy under the water. Of course, this water apparently is imbued with the powers of the Lake of Reincarnation because mm-hmm. he comes up and he is all of a sudden Matt Hardy V1. V1. And they've even, they even have the, the, uh, the little graphic that they used to do in WWE where it was like when Matt, he was V2, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like the Matt Facts or whatever it was. Yeah, Matt Facts. Um, so they dunk him back on the water and they have an underwater cannon. Hardy's looking at the camera doing this. <laughs> the old yeah. Matt Hardy stuff. And they bring him back up and it's V2. Yeah. And he's, he's naming it some Matt Facts. They dunk him back down. He's doing this stuff mm-hmm. um, underwater. They bring him. They they think they drowned him. He comes back. He's Damascus. Yeah, that was the great part. They thought that they drowned and killed him because they're leaving, and he's just floating there like yeah, this. Yeah, floating. It was great. But yeah, he comes back as Damascus. Um, he sets up Ortiz on a table, backdrops Santana onto him, uh, and then Hardy. This one, this sucked the most. Hardy put Ortiz. There was like this giant bell that was just there. He brings Ortiz over and puts his head underneath the bell and then rings it. And then they're like, oh, all right. And uh, Ortiz is trembling and shaking and stuff. And then he duct tapes. This is the only bit that made me sad. That he duct taped Ortiz to this wheelchair that was there. If the wheelchair is there, you duct tape him to it, and then you throw him down the stairs, and you replace him with a mannequin, and that's how you do it. But they didn't do that. I guarantee you somebody brought that idea the up, and then, and then And then the wheelchair topples over the mannequin. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then he uh, shoves Santana into a freezer. Again, another uh, uh, reference back to the concourse match. Mm-hmm. And then he locks that with a little broom handle that's there. Uh, uh, meanwhile. The con- sorry, yeah, we're in the bowels of the arena. Hager's looking for Paige. He finds his horse, turns. We see the same sign we saw before. Bar is that way. Uh, Hager enters. Paige is there having a drink. Uh, Hager pulls up kind of next to him. Paige pours him one. Uh, asks him, are you here to fight? Are you here to drink? Hager takes a swig. Uh, Page says something to him, and they start brawling. And Hager is annihilating uh, Adam Page. Mm-hmm. Page gets in a good shot of the pool cue, breaks over Hager's back. Hager no sells it. Hits uh, Uranagi on on the pool table on Page. Puts him on the bar. Does that cartoonish thing in movies where you put him on the bar and slide the person across. They do that. Uh, Gut wrench power bombs him through the table. Gets a two count. Kenny shows up to save Paige from more damage, and they just start breaking bottles over Hager's head. Oh, it was great. There was five, six, something like that. Yeah. Um, eventually, Kenny hits a V trigger, uh, gets down on all fours. Paige hits a buckshot, or sorry, just bends over. Paige hits a buckshot lariat uh, over Kenny's back, uh, knocks Hager over the bar. Uh, Kenny orders as usual, so Paige pours him a, a cup of milk while Kenny pours a glass of whiskey for Paige. They, uh, they cheers, they, they drink. cheers, and they Great. drink. So tag team champions back together, back on the same page, so to yep. speak. Yep. Um, so that was good stuff. There's some great back and forth with Sammy and Matt, and then Matt hits a trio of Northern Light suplexes. We think that's it, because that's usually what he does. We cut to Jericho and Nick brawling. We cut back, and Matt is still hitting Northern Light suplexes on Sammy. He's at the 50-yard line at this point. And he's still going down the football field. This was amazing. Yes. This was so this good. This was awesome. So we go back to Nick and Jericho. Nick is chucking footballs at him. Uh, then Jericho sends Nick into the... There's like this giant jaguar head. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's made out of. He sends Nick into the mouth of that. Uh, the ma- the jaguar's mascot shows up to Jericho, starts thrusting his pelvis at him. <laughs> Jericho hits him with a Judas <laughs> he effect. He gets a Judas effect. And says, I don't like mascots. Um, and then Jericho hits Nick with Floyd the baseball bat, covers, Nick kicks out. And then Jericho's like, no, I want to challenge that. That was three. He gets out the red flag and he throws down the challenge flag. So they, so uh, uh, Aubrey Edwards uh, brings Jericho. Or she goes. She says, "Okay, we'll replay it." She goes into the replay tent. Jericho goes in with her, tries to zip it up, and then we go back to Matt suplexing Sammy Guevara. Is this the point where we actually got the touchdown or no? Well, first, no, no, no. We see that a little bit more. Then we go back to the the where Aubrey says, "No, the play stands. Mm-hmm, the call yeah. stands." And Jericho's upset. Then we go back to Matt. He, he says, "You're he, a shitty ref." Yeah, he's finishing uh, suplex and uh, Sammy the length of the field. He's in the end zone. He does a touchdown dance. He says, hey, let's do some Alex Wright uh, stuff. Uh, Rick Knox throw the f- throws a flag for excessive celebration. Matt Jackson super kicks him. That was good stuff. By the way, Matt Jackson was wearing a, a FPOS tape. Man, he's wearing the most rib tape I've ever seen. That was a it lot was of from- rib tape. You got to watch the uh, the 
episode of WCW, because I was doing some research on some stuff, the episode of WCW yeah. Nitro that followed, I think, Owen Hart's uh, death. Because I was ch- I was curious to see if they were going to say anything about it. And uh, the main event featured, uh, it was like a six-man tag. Uh, Roddy Piper is one of them. Mm-hmm. I swear he had rib tape up to the nipples. It was the most rib tape I've ever seen on a dude in my life. It was I mean, cartoonish. honestly, that's, you should, it should go this high. You got ribs that go all the way down from right. I mean, it's all but the, way down the tradition in wrestling is is to put rib tape where you don't really have any ribs. You don't have any ribs. DDP put it down here by his kidneys, where there's really there, you might get a little bit of the short rib, but that's it. Doesn't help at all. Yeah, it doesn't help at all. Yeah. Uh, so after that, Matt uh, sets up Jericho on a table. Nick goes up into the concourse or the stands, and then runs halfway up the lower bowl. Runs back down, jumps on the rail, does a crossbody, puts Jericho through a table. And then uh, Paige comes out with the, the line marker thing and then paints a line over Jericho. At this point, Sammy's crawling on the field. He gets hit with a sprinkler. He comes to. He thinks he won because he's the only person left out there. Um, and that's when Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega roll into the stadium with the field cart. Oh, this was good. That was great. They give chase. Sammy flees into the stands. He's surrounded by the elite. Kenny approaches. He eats a boot from Sammy. Matt Hardy approaches. He eats a boot. Uh so Sammy is choking Matt Hardy, and that's when Neo One approaches. Mm, the new, the re, a, yeah, the, the Vanguard One's replacement. Yes, and that's when uh, Sammy's distracted enough. He releases it. Uh, uh, Hardy is holding on to Sammy. Kenny hits him with a V trigger, and then twenty feet. This yeah. was insane. This was insane. So, so Kenny gets Sammy up on his shoulders and does a one winged angel off the is a camera platform above the tunnel. And does a one winged angel off there onto? I know it's a crash pad, but the, the, twenty the feet height, is a long way to go. The height of that was insane. It was crazy because they just kept on falling. Yeah, yeah. And so he does a one winged angel off the concourse through this platform, which has a crash pad underneath of it. Uh, Aubrey Edwards uh, brings a ladder over, gets on top. It sees that Kenny has his arm over Sammy. Counts the pinfall. The elite win. Uh, but they showed several replays plays of that, and the height on that was crazy, insane. Yeah, it was insane. absolutely crazy. Yeah, insane. They have the confidence to stand the edge of that platform up there in the concourse, the camera platform, mm-hmm. and then to have perfect form to bring him over and land. Yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the the elites down the field celebrating. Matt dumps Gatorade on Kenny. Uh, Hangman doesn't leave this time. Right. He's not overjoyed per se him and matt have a couple leaving. of a couple of friendly words no hugs yeah. but a couple no of middle friendly fingers words. either so no middle fingers and they don't like celebrate together at the end but hangman takes care of uh, hangman and nick sort of take care of kenny because it was a yep. big fall and they all celebrate uh and then i think like fireworks go off or something yeah yeah, yeah it they was do. Uh, they, they go off in the background yeah it was a really terrific stuff just ab- just really terrific fun. and if honestly fun. if if the if the situation we're all in right now has done anything for wrestling, it, it maybe has, has caused both companies in North America, uh, the two biggest companies anyways, to sort of, you know, maybe think outside the box a little bit and, and, and approach things in a different way that still might be appealing and might bring some freshness to, to how things are presented uh, mm-hmm. between Money in the Bank, this, uh, Firefly Funhouse, uh, Boneyard, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, the, this was really, really fun stuff. And I think people are going to be talking about it for a while. Yeah, I think so. I think it's tons of fun. Tons cool. of fun. Anyways, uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks to Cultaholic once again. Go sub to their channel uh, for rating us again. Uh, yes, thank you, everybody, who subbed tonight. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're almost thank at you, 300 subs right now, man. That's the we're, best, at, we're at 299 best. subs. That's uh, awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. So thank you so much. And then tomorrow we will be back with uh our news no we're not tomorrow sunday we ain't doing oh tomorrow tomorrow sunday it feels like sunday it feels like sunday we got a dark side dark side of the ring the own heart one right that is true yeah dark side of the ring uh so thanks everybody for tuning in we super duper oh we're at 300 subs who just did that uh maggi shine thank you so much much. thank you so much everybody look at that got us over uh so yeah till next time we'll talk to you guys later goodbye